If you don't know history, then you don't know anything. Hi, good evening. My name is Aubrey Dananugid, and I'm the second presenter for today. My topic is all about the historical philosophies of quality. Studying history makes it possible for us to gain a deeper understanding of the world we live in. Building awareness and understanding of historical events and patterns help us to develop a much greater appreciation for current events today. Especially over the past century systems, improving and managing quality have evolved rapidly in recent years. Activities have been replaced and supplemented by quality control, quality assurance has been developed and refined, and now many companies are using a process of continuous and company-wide improvement working towards TQM and strategic process improvement. The concepts and ideas of TQM were formalized based on the foundations of the work done over the last few centuries. So what we will discuss for today are the quality gurus and these individuals who have been identified as making a significant contribution to improving the quality of goods and services. So in this lesson, we will only tackle seven gurus in quality and they can be divided into four periods. So the pioneer who is Walter Schuhart, the early Americans who took messages of quality to the Japanese in the early 1950s who are Edward Deming, Joseph Duran, and Armand Feigenbaum. The Japanese response from the late 1950s onwards who are Dr. Kaoru Ishikawa and Dr. Genichi Taguchi and the new Western wave concentrating on quality awareness from 1970s onwards who are Philip Crosby and many more. Let's begin with Walter Schuhart. Dr. Schuhart became the first to understand, use, and supply the principles of probability and statistics and gave birth to quality movement with theoretical approach. Therefore, he is known as the grandfather or father of statistical quality control. He is a statistician at Bell Laboratories. Schuhart developed statistical control process methods to distinguish between random and non-random variation in industrial processes to keep processes under control. And those data gathered will be plotted on the Schuhart chart or the control chart. He also originally developed the Plan Do Check Act or the PDCA cycle, which is also called as Deming Wheel. It is said that Dr. Deming adapted his work in which it is most popular in the business world for problem solving. And he also greatly influenced Deming and Geron. The second guru is William Edwards Deming. It is not enough to do your best. You must know what to do and then do your best, according to his code. Deming advocated statistical process control, or SPC, which is developed by Schuhart. He is also the foundation of the Deming Prize Award, which is the highest award for industrial excellence in Japan. He also introduced Deming's 14-point program for improving quality and popularized PDCA cycle, which is also called Schuhart or Deming cycle. He also introduced a system profound knowledge. So what is Deming Prize and why is it given? So a brief explanation of the Deming Prize. It is an annual award presented to an organization that has implemented TQM or Total Quality Management suitable for its management philosophy, scope, type, scale of the business and management environment. So the Deming 14 points includes First is create constancy of purpose for improvement of product and service. Second is to adopt the new philosophy. Third, cease dependence on mass inspection. Fourth, end the practice of awarding business on the price tag alone. Fifth is improve constantly and forever the system of production and training. Sixth is institute training. Seven is institute leadership. Eighth, drive out fear. 9. Break down barriers between staff areas. 10. Is eliminate slogans, exhortations, and targets for the workforce. 11. Is to eliminate numerical quotas. 12. Is to remove barriers to pride in workmanship. 13. Is to institute a vigorous program of education and retraining. And lastly, take action to accomplish the program. So let's move on to a system of profound knowledge by Deming. So first is the appreciation for a system. A system is a set of functions or activities within an organization that works together to achieve organizational goals. So the management's job is to optimize the system, not only the part of it, but as a whole. 
so it requires cooperation. Second is the psychology. The designers and implement of decisions are people. Hence, understanding their psychology is important. Third is understanding process variation. A production process contains many sources of variation. Reduction in variation improves quality, so there are two types of variation, common causes and special causes. So, focus on the special causes. Common causes can be reduced only by change of technology. So, the last one is the theory of knowledge. Management decisions should be driven by facts, data, and justifiable theories. Don't follow management funds. So, the third guru is Joseph M. Duran. So, he emphasized that the importance of producing quality products through an approach focused on quality planning, control, and improvement. And he also defined product quality as fitness for use, as viewed by the customer. So, it includes quality of design, quality of conformance, availability, safety, and field of use. And he also categorized the cost of quality as cost of prevention, cost of detection or appraisal, and cost of failure. So according to Duran, you can pursue quality on two levels. First is the mission of the firm as a whole is to achieve the product quality. Second is the mission of each individual department is to achieve high production quality. So Duran also proposed the quality trilogy that includes quality planning, quality control, and quality improvement. So, in quality planning, it is a process of preparing to meet quality goals and it involves understanding customer needs and developing product features. So, the next one is quality control. It is a process of meeting quality goals during operations. It controls the parameters and measures the deviation and taking action. So, last is the quality improvement is a process for breaking through to unprecedented levels of performance. So it identifies the areas of improvement and get the right people to bring about the change. So the fourth one is Armand Fagenbaum. So he proposed the concept of total quality control. According to him, making quality is everyone's responsibility. And he stressed out that interdepartmental communication and emphasize careful measurement and report of quality cost. According also to Fagenbaum, quality as a total field customer and customer define quality. So the next one is Philip Crosby. He preached that quality is free and he believed that the organization can reduce overall costs by improving the overall quality of its processes. According also to Crosby, absolutes of management includes first is Quality means conformance to requirements and not elegance. Second, there is no such thing as quality problem. Third, there is no such thing as economics of, of quality. It is always cheaper to do the job right the first time. And lastly, the only performance measurement is the cost of quality or the cost of non-conformance. So, he also imposed the basic elements of improvement. That includes determination, education, and implementation. So let's dive into the history of quality management. So next 20 odd years, when top managers in USA only focus on the marketing, production quantity, and financial performance, Japanese managers improve quality at unprecedented rate. So the market started preferring Japanese products, and American companies suffered immensely. America woke up to the quality revolution in early 1980s by consulting to Dr. Demi. Did you know under General MacArthur's Japan Rebuilding Plan, Deming went to Japan to help with the census after World War II. Deming also taught statistical process control to leaders of prominent Japanese businesses. The man helped shape the world Edwards Deming taught Japan's manufacturers how to produce top quality products economically. The Japanese used that knowledge to turn the global economy on its head and beat U.S. industry in its own game. So, Deming particularly criticized the dominant method of quality control used by U.S. Under this system, products were inspected for defects only after they were made. In contrast, Deming maintained it was better to design the manufacturing process to ensure that the quality products were created from the start. Deming's ideas were simple, yet revolutionary. 
By then, 80-year-old Deming was virtually unknown in USA, whereas Japanese government had instituted the Deming Prize for Quality in 1950s. So managers started to realize that the quality of management is more important than management of quality. Birth of term total quality management. So TQM means that integration of quality principles into organization's management systems. So the sixth guru is Genichi Taguchi from Japan. He emphasized the minimization of variation and he is concerned with the cost of quality to society. He also extended Duran's concept of external failure. So the last one is Karu Ishikawa. He developed problem-solving tools such as the cost-effect diagram or the fishbone diagram that we all know. He was called as the father of quality circles. So the quality circle means a small groups of similar employees that meet regularly to plan and carry out process changes to improve the quality, productivity, and the work environment. I hope that you learned something from me today that adds in your current knowledge in this subject. The more you know about the past, the better prepared you are in the future. And once again, my name is Aubrey Dananugid and let's move on to the third presenter, Ate Lafri Riddell.